Hey, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. Uh, a couple days ago, I did a video, a very quick video in the morning, uh, surveying some of the, uh, the frost situation in my garden. It got down below zero that evening, and uh, there's some pretty good damage in the garden. So I thought I'd just take you around and show you what what was de destroyed, what was damaged, and what survived and various things I did that seemed to uh, <clears throat> mitigate damage. I'm really trying with this channel to to show you the success and failure. I, I find a lot of, uh, I mean I'm, I'm a big fan of a lot of gardening channels on YouTube and you, you hardly ever see what goes wrong. All you see is like, hey look at this, it's awesome. Hey look at that, it's awesome. I'm a great gardener because everything's awesome. And uh, I think a lot of you watching this, uh, you kind of get tired of that because if you're an actual gardener in real condition, unless you're extremely lucky or you're planting the same thing every year in a place where those things grow well, um, if you're trying new things, trying different things, or pushing the, you know, pushing the edges of what your climate can handle, uh, some things are going to go wrong. This particular frost we just had. Uh, you know, I've been gardening for quite some time, and I'm 46 years old, and I've never seen a June 4th freeze <laughs> like that. I mean, uh, plants that I've had exposed, like my Swiss chard and my beets and uh, kale, um, that were dam very, you know, damaged, and in certain cases very damaged uh, by by the by the frost we got that night. It wasn't just frost; it was a freeze, right? My hose froze. The water in the hose froze. The little buckets of water, my watering bucket, the water inside it was frozen. It was a freeze up we had that night in June, which is very rare for uh, this area. I'm in zone 6A. It doesn't always happen. So, I mean, everything I was doing this year is stuff I've done before. In, in, in fact, uh, things I'd exposed at that point in the, uh, in the year, I would normally even expose a little bit earlier. I was being conservative, I was being careful this year, and I still uh, got uh, punished because uh, you know, Mother Nature had different plans, there was different stuff going on, and uh, we just got a ridiculous cold night. In fact, tonight it's supposed to get to 3 degrees Celsius, it's a low of 3 degrees Celsius tonight, which is another risk of frost. Now, it's not going to be as cold as two nights ago or three nights ago when it was zero or minus one or whatever. Uh, but still, that's, I mean, it's June 6th as I'm filming this right now. And uh, three degrees at night in June, that's ridiculous. That's very rare. In fact, I think the uh, International Airport here in Nova Scotia is saying that, uh, I can't remember the exact date, but uh, tonight's going to be the coldest night since like the turn of the century or the early 19, 1917. Or I can't remember the exact date, but coldest night in like a hundred years on record uh, so I don't know what's going on but you just gotta you know roll with it and if stuff dies you replant so anyway come with me and I'm gonna show you uh, what's happened here okay so we're gonna start with what was damaged this is a garden with uh, Swiss chard and it was heavily damaged I mean if I try to zoom in here a bit you can see that it's this was big and proud and beautiful just a few days ago and see how it's all it's all laid down right and, and flattened out um, you know it, it was standing up and it was much stronger uh, you know I'm gonna wait it's gonna be three degrees tonight so I'm just gonna leave it and see what happens tonight and then uh, I'll come out the next few days and just pick off the damaged leaves and, and see what happens. Maybe do some replanting, we'll really see. Sorry, this isn't Swiss chard, these are beets. Sorry about that, these are beets. So clearly, uh, and I've got three different varieties of beets growing here and they're all kind of wiped out. <laughs> so um, clearly beets cannot handle, I mean I've seen beets handle a little bit of frost, but uh, uh, a serious frost. You know, if your forecast says it's gonna be zero um, you got to cover your beets so they're uh, either going to die or take a serious beating and I believe these beets are still alive certainly the larger ones uh, I can see some signs of life some of the inner 
sort of inside leaves are a little bit more uh, viable, but uh, I don't know, only time will tell. I'm probably going to have to do some replanting here. And that's a shame because these have been growing since March, some of them. <laughs> here we've got uh, mature Swiss chard, looks good. And this is like a romaine lettuce, looking fine. And you go a little further down and the, the Swiss chard that's a bit younger is, see, you see down there it's, let me zoom in in a bit here. That Swiss chard there, and you can tell the, the mature one there doesn't look too bad. But those younger ones, oh my goodness, they've been beaten to pieces. And they were moved, right? I moved them. And they were doing fine. But something about moving them, they can't seem to handle a freeze the way ones that have been growing in the same place all along. Those ones are okay. So I find that very interesting. And this is a pattern I've noticed in my garden. Things that were moved took a much heavier beating from that cold than things that have been in place. Even spinach, just to give you an idea how cold it was, uh, look at this. See all that white? That's frost damage. I mean, that, that spinach was fine a couple days ago. So, I mean, you know, you know how tough spinach is. And I, I planted the spinach under glass here in a makeshift cold frame in, uh, I don't know, super early March. And it has been fine. And then that one outrageously cold night in June, and there's frost damage on it. I can't believe it. Some of, the, some of these plants, and there's another example of, of ones that were moved, right? So, so this one here has been in place all along. The one next to it's been moved. Look at the shape it's in. Look at the leaves, right? All that blonde whiteness, that's just, that's frost can't seem to handle the frost as well if it's been moved. I don't know how well this comes across on camera, but a lot of my uh, onions, these are onion sets. See that white there? They're laid over. Uh, some of them are still sticking up, but a lot of them are sort of flattened out and laid over and there's this sort of whiteness. See that, that whiteness at the base? Uh, like they were freezer burnt. Right, they just they've see you can see that one there. It's laid down, and at the bend where it meets it where it where it goes to the center, it's uh it's sort of white, and uh, I mean that green is doomed. Hopefully there's enough energy. See that one there, that that whiteness there in the in the center, right? That's the frost. So I hope there's still enough viability in the actual um, seed to send some new greens up. Because those greens are doomed. And, uh, you know, I, I consider onion a pretty tough plant. But, I mean, we went from, you know, about four days in a row of it being 25 to, you know, minus one or zero or something like that one night. So, and that's just what the forecast said. I don't know what temperature was actually out here in my garden. So I, I have a unique microclimate here, which is... Uh, Terrible. <laughs> you know, even some of my rhubarb uh, leaves have a bit of frost damage on them, which is pretty impressive. Now here's an interesting thing here. These are all uh, like a, a wild Russian kale type thing. And they're fairly devastating. These are ones I, I started in my cold frame in March, and they've been moved. And they were doing okay, to tell you the truth. But you can see they've been flattened out. That there, again, there's that sort of white color. You're going from a vibrant green to a white color, right? Just, just devastated, right? And, you know, I'm going to monitor these over the next few days and pick away the dead stuff. I don't want to be feeding slugs out here. And uh, hopefully some, some you know, uh, new growth um, will, will, will come in from the center. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Hopefully there's still enough viability in the root for some new growth to sort of come out of the center there. That's what I'm looking for. Now, uh, I got some uh, corn mosh there. That's uh, that's fine. And of course, the dill in this garden is doing great. But the other thing is the same variety of kale. So this is like a wild Russian kale. And over here, this is wild Russian kale. Let me bring you closer here. 
The, this wild Russian kale has not been moved. It's been in the same place. It was direct seeded in March and uh, these are the few ones that did well and I didn't move them because they were in the center. And they're fine. I'm going to zoom you back out here. Let's see, they're, they're completely, like, you know, looking at these with a the naked eye I'm sure is different than looking at them on camera, but they're absolutely unblemished. And it must have something to do with the roots being in the ground and them just being as healthy and as strong and as vibrant as they can possibly be as opposed to having been moved. You know, I've often said plants don't like being moved. And this is a perfect example of a plant that has not been moved so it was subjected to the exact same extreme conditions as the same variety over there. But those ones are just, it looks like someone took a blowtorch to them. And these ones are just are fine, totally fine. So are the ones over there. Uh, zoom me in a bit here. Those haven't been moved and they're completely fine. The, on camera here, that looks like the, a bit of whiteness that's just a reflection of the light. They're green. They're just a beautiful green with a bit of purple in the stem as healthy as you'd like and of course there's dill everywhere and it's fine I mean this dill just came up on its own and it decided to leave it um, there's another interesting thing those are onions that weren't onion sets these were onion seeds and they have not suffered the same damage as the onion sets right they're just they're not laying down they're not damaged at all they're fine so that's another thing. I I'd plan. I I'd, I'd planned to plant a lot more seed onions this year, but uh, things just didn't work out that way. I got busy doing stuff, and I had to rely on onion sets instead. Anyway, something to be said for things being direct seeded. I got a variety of uh, spinach here, which is doing fine, which did not bolt. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which variety this is. I think it's Avon, but I'm not sure. Um, and the kale that I moved here, this is kale that was direct seeded in my uh, cold frames. Um, like that one doesn't look too bad. But the one next to it, you can see the how that leaf there has turned sort of a blonde color. Right? There's some leaf damage for sure. Uh, I'm not going to bother dealing with them today because it's going to be so cold tonight. Um, who knows what's going to happen tonight. I'm just going to let nature take its course. <laughs> I still have some more in the cold frame so I can um, I can replant if needs be. But these these were doing great up until a few days ago. They were really, you know, I, I got like a row of spinach and a row of kale and the idea is that the, once the spinach is done the kale can sort of take over. And I moved all these kale a couple weeks ago and they were doing great. And then uh, June 4th, uh, June 3rd, evening frost happened, and uh, who knows what I'm left with here. Of course, the spinach, or sorry, not spinach, the lettuce, it's like a romaine lettuce that I started here well over a month ago. It's totally fine, direct seeded, totally fine. Something to be said for direct seeding. Here we have some um, peas that were all about six inches high. And uh, <laughs> they look like someone threw acid on them, I gotta tell you. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera, but uh, I don't know if they're gonna make it or not. They're in bad shape. Um, they're laid down, some of them are just wrecked. Some of them, the leaves are sort of uh, blackened and, and wrecked. So, uh, yeah. I've never seen this before. <laughs> I've been gardening for years, and uh, in June, I'm, I'm, I, you know, uh, things happen in in May and in April, of course. But in June, I've never seen this kind of uh, damage from cold. This is just ridiculous. Well, I don't know if they'll make it or not. This is a tall growing variety of pea that I got from Vessi Seeds. Uh, I got another variety in another garden that uh, is called Alaskan bush pea and they seem to be fine. Let me show you those. I can't, I don't know if you can tell the difference. This is, uh, I, did, I did a video a few days ago where I was showing how to make a trellis. Right, this is the uh, that lazy man's trellis that I made. And uh, 
it looks like the peas here. Th these are seeds I saved. I got these seeds a couple years ago. It's called uh, Alas Alaskan bush pea. They don't grow very tall. And I mean, I'm guessing if they are sort of a popular variety in Alaska, maybe they can take some cold because uh, <laughs> they're all totally fine. And I mean, we're I'm about 20 feet from the garden where the peas are all wrecked. So I, I find it hard to believe that this is a unique microclimate. I think it's just the variety. It must have some, you know, antifreeze in its veins or something. I don't know. Is it because it's fine? Uh, tomatoes that I direct seeded here in early March, which I did last year successfully and the year before successfully. Um, none of them made it. They're all completely devastated. I don't know if it's the height in here or whatever. I mean, I've done this before and it's worked. Uh, but normally the, the soil is at grade, whereas the soil level in this box is about uh, four inches higher, which I did to uh, avoid it being too moist. But uh, we zoom in. I don't know if you can see, but uh, tomatoes are, you know, it's almost like they were never here. Let's just pick one. So, let me zoom this back out a bit. That's all that's left of them. Totally destroyed. So that's not coming back. <laughs> yeah. So all those tomatoes that have been growing up, and they were good, I don't know, six inches tall. And they're they're all gone. Just like that. One night. They were fine the day before I looked at them. And now they're done. Just done. I'm gonna have to buy transplants. There's no way around it. And these are supposed to be blight resistant, you know. So uh that's a damn shame. Now, let me show you something interesting. Now, in that garden I just showed you previously, I'd already lost a good half of them before when we had a previous hard freeze. So, uh, like any gardener, you hedge. And uh, so, I, where I worked as a dollar store, and I just got some dollar store seeds. I think they're a, a beefsteak tomato variety. And I stuck those do dollar store seeds in this cold frame. Now this one, the soil level is at grade. And I don't know if you can see this. There's a tomato right there. And there's another one. But these guys, these beefsteak tomatoes, cheap, cheap old tomatoes, got for next to nothing dollar store. Look, there's some kale there too. Um, uh, it just came up on its own. But anyway, these cheap tomatoes are growing in here. I don't know, I got about at least a dozen growing in here. I mean, they're not very big, and who knows what they'll amount to, but I'm I'm happy to just let, let the experiment run its course. Why not, right? I'm going to put some peppers in here anyway. Let's let the tomatoes get along with them. But I don't, I don't know if it's the variety. Maybe whatever makes... Those uh, other ones, blight resistant, makes them extremely fr intolerant to frost. Who knows? I, I find that hard to believe. I'm guessing that because these are lower to the ground, because the the earth has heat. Right, the higher you get up from the earth, the less heat you get in terms of it being generated. Right. So I'm guessing that it's it's the it's the depth. It's because these are lower to the ground. Right. There's more heat down there, whereas the other ones are about six inches higher and that must have been all it took to you know uh, change the equation and here in this box just to show you um, let's lift the lid up here again another bed at grade just to speak again speak to this idea of things being warmer at grade um, you know, there's there's the bed over there where everything died, right? This bed's at grade. That one's about six inches above grade, the soil level. I got peppers here that were here before the freeze. And peppers are about as fragile a plant as you can, you know, have on the ground. And look, they're they're fine, right? They're doing fine. They made it through all that. 
So, not only that, but the kale in here, of course, is fine too, right? Whereas the same variety of kale that I put in that garden I showed previously is in really bad shape. All right, I thought I'd pop the lid off this uh, dome here. I got uh, cucumbers growing under here. And uh, the day before the freeze, I noticed there was some signs of germination. So these were about as tender as a cucumber can be. And squashes, you know, cucumbers, zucchini, pumpkins, they cannot handle cold at all. So this will be a real test of this, this dome thing, you know, and given you know, it's pretty, you know, it's been a couple days since we had that. I wanted to wait a couple days for the full effect. It's been a couple days since we had that freeze. It's obviously devastated things that are, you know, kale and stuff. It's relatively tough. Let's see how well these uh, cucumbers, which are about as, you know, squashes, cucumbers, things like that, cannot handle cold. Let's see what we got. They look okay. You know what, they actually look okay. Let's use the zoom function here. Oh, where are we here? There's a squash right there. Right? And, uh, there's another one. There's another one. There's two actually. And I, th I think if these were frost damage, you'd know. I mean, they, they just look look destroyed if there was frost damage. All right, there's another guy right there. And there's uh, two right there. And I don't see any sign of frost damage. They seem to be okay. So. The domes are good. I mean, I don't have the time to put domes over everything in my garden. <laughs> you know, I got four domes. That's all. That's all I've got here. And the idea, the plan for this year was to you know, use the domes to propagate tough plants, then take them off the tough plants and use them to propagate tender plants. And it was working out great. <laughs> and then we had the strangest early Ju early June ever, <laughs> with utter destruction. Anyway, that worked. I'm not going to bother uh, looking under here. I'm just going to assume these guys are okay. Um, here, just while I've got you here. I just don't want to have to go through the hassle of undoing this and doing it back up again. Right. You'll have to take my word for it, but they are growing. Uh, maybe I'll do a garden update video in a, in a week or so and show you, assuming they're still... Assuming they make it through tonight. So the zucchini are growing. Which is great because I planted all the seeds Vessi seeds gave me. <laughs> like the entire pack went into this one, and the entire pack went into that one. Uh, every one of those circles has two seeds in it. I always plant at least two. Of course, all the uh, oregano and the parsley and the carrots, and of course the uh, uh, lamb's quarters. <laughs> Uh, they're all doing fine. That's all doing great. I thought I'd end here with these these uh, compost bin squash that I have growing here. Uh, let's have a look at these guys. Doing fine, right? Doing very fine. They totally made it through that big freeze. So that's great. Although one, I, one of them's had the top cut off by a cutworm or something. That ain't good. I'm gonna have to get some slug bait out here. There's something going on here because one of them was destroyed. I can't have that work its way through the whole batch. Slug damage, I think. Let's have a look at the squash. I got. I can't remember if these are. 
or if these are um, like a squash or a pumpkin, I can't remember which which they are. Although they're all technically squash, but this about as low budget as a frost cover as you can get with a really cold freeze, right? This is one that wasn't some little joke of a freeze. This is a freeze, a freeze, Dr. Freeze. Look, there's a slug right there. All right, guy, get out of there. Uh, there's another slug. Oh, I gotta get some slug bait on here. This is crazy. Real problem. Slugs seem to love. Now, once your squash get a certain size, they're immune. I would say they're immune to slugs. But when they're little like this, they're very vulnerable to slugs. And the slugs can, as you saw in the previous frame, can just t t kill a whole plant. Because all you got to do is cut the stem and it's over. Anyway, these squash are doing great so far. And that's also a reason to plant in twos. So, anyway, I think that's about it. I'm going to put some slug bait out to deal with those guys. Uh, no, I'm not going to pick them off. i, I got too many things to keep track of here. I can put down a couple little pellets that just break down to iron anyway and kill them. <laughs> I'm not messing around. Uh, I get all my slug bait from Safers. If you check the description box, you can get a, a discount on, um, on that product. It's... Uh, relatively benign to your garden it just turns into iron as it breaks down so uh, not a re not really a big deal and uh, my experience using you know dishes of beer and these traps and that trap and so on uh, this seems to work much better I find you only really need it for a short period in your season and then you just put it away and you don't need it the rest of the year one container will last you years anyway these are doing great I better put that plastic back on because it's going to get to Three degrees Celsius tonight. All right, so I hope that was uh, informative. I hope that gave you some ideas. Uh, at the very least, I learned some things about about the limits of uh, you know coldness that certain plants can take, and which plants are better able to take it than others, and under which conditions certain plants can take cold compared to others. Uh, is I found it very interesting that some of the kale of the same variety was fine and then other kale of the same variety was really really hurt and because they were different stages of maturity I found that very interesting so anyway I hope that gave you some good ideas I hope that helped you uh, make preparations and plan for different kinds of uh, climatic events in the coming years and uh, if you enjoy this please like share subscribe and until next time get out there Get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.